I want to share with you an interview with Jose Rosado. He's big in the money Twitter space. He's got over 50,000 Twitter followers. And I wanted to bring him onto YouTube. He's trying to do YouTube now. He's building his YouTube channel. And in this interview, we talk about Twitter, how to tweet, what to tweet, the mindset that goes into building a successful Twitter account, and how Jose learned to tweet and built 50,000 followers into his audience as an English as a second language guy. He spoke Spanish, learned English literally just to tweet, and now is dominating on Twitter. So if that sounds interesting to you, check out this interview with Jose Rosado. Let's go. Before we jump into it, if you wouldn't mind smashing that like button down below and subscribing for more content like this, leave a comment down below and let me know, what do you think of this interview with Jose? Would love to hear your thoughts. Jose, what's up? Hey, Alex. <laughs> How are you, man? Good to have you on. Oh, we almost I'm, didn't do I'm this doing today. Good. Jose, let's start with background. So for people that don't know who you are, how would you describe yourself? I'm retired, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I describe myself. And it always catches people by surprise because I'm 34, I believe. I never remember, I never, I never know how old I am because I stopped counting. I don't, I don't do birthdays anymore. My wife does them for me, but I just don't. It's like one more day. <laughs> um, but I always say re retire because what I do is what I actually love. So I'm, don't, I don't feel like I'm working. I don't feel like I'm grinding every day, although, Technically, I am. It just doesn't feel like that. Because when you find something that you actually love, other people love, and it's valuable for other people and yourself, and you make money from it, you found treasure. In my case, my treasure is a blue gold Twitter. And of course, social media. Because I've been able to uh, monetize an audience in such a way that I can live uh, a very comfortable life in Dominican Republic by selling my courses, my ebooks, by coaching people on how to do similar things and take advantage of this multi trillion dollar um, niche that is making money online and monetizing your skills and taking advantage of all of the beautiful resources and technology and stuff that we have available today in age that our ancestors didn't have. Like imagine yourself, imagine your, your parents. Or your grandparents with Twitter. You can't. It's impossible. But today, look at yourself. You found I blue can't even gold imagine myself too. in 2009 with Twitter. You found yeah. <laughs> blue gold too a couple of months ago with Twitter. And you, and you see that. I, I remember you tweeted something yesterday that caught my attention. That the level of sophistication, let's say, of, of Twitter in regards to the audience that you can grow is similar to, to the level that you found in, um, what's the name of that? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I interpreted that but as a the, positive thing. with the thing. reach of TikTok. Yeah. With the engagement and the reach of TikTok. It's, it, yeah, because you think about Twitter. Who's on it? Mark Cuban. You know, Winkle Voss twins. Smart billionaires. People. Jeff Bezos. You know, like, I don't actually know if Jeff Bezos is on Twitter. Very <laughs> smart people. This, people and yeah. the thing is that every, every trend that you see um, on other social media, they're born like from Reddit and 4chan. And they, they, they bubble up to Twitter. And when it comes to Twitter, it's when it started becoming mainstream. I always find it amusing when my wife, my wife, not plural, my wife, singular. <laughs> I need to, you know, I need to make sure that I talk correctly. Um, <laughs> always send me like a meme, like a month after I saw it on Twitter. So on Twitter, we are the trendsetter. We set the trend for what, um, basically we live in the future. People who are on Twitter, we live in the future. What we see on, on Twitter is, What's going to happen in the world? We can predict the world better, in my opinion, um, because we see things real time. Um, and there's not as much censorship as there is on, on Instagram. On Instagram, you send someone to hell and they'll block you. Like, they'll tell you, hey, this goes against our community back, uh, whatever. <laughs> Twitter, although there's a little bit of censorship, it's a little bit more, there's more free, free speech, which gives us the opportunity to Talk about shit that other other social medias just don't care about or are waiting for someone else to tell them what to do. Twitter is the place. So what was it what was it about Twitter? Actually, could you break down kind of the backstory of how you found Twitter, how you make your first dollar there, how you approach how you how you approach that? Like let's talk about your your relationship with Twitter. So in 2015 and 16, Mr. Orange Man Bad was you know, becoming president of the United States. He wanted to become president of the United States. I'm like, 
what the hell is happening? Why is this guy doing this? Why does he talk like that? So I went to Twitter because that is that was his main platform. And watching the chaos on Twitter, um, I discovered people that were not specifically talking about politics, but that were involved with people that were talking about politics and they and the politicians and people were retweeting these people. And I found them. I found guys like Ed Lattimore, um, Mike Cernovich, um, who else? Alexander Cortez and other guys who were more or less political, not, not as much as, for example, Cernovich, but um, they were retweeting each other. And I'm like, okay, these people are talking about self-discipline, about becoming better, about becoming more valuable. And they were just writing. No videos, no fancy images, just thinking out loud in the wild, in the dumpster fire um, social media that we call Twitter. And that caught my attention. And then I see them selling courses and ebooks and making massive amounts of money selling a digital product, which I had been dreaming about, meaning selling digital products for a long time. Because I do like talking. I love writing. I like telling my, saying my opinions out loud. Not every, not every single one, but at least the ones that make me money, right? And, um, I saw that and I said, I want that. I want that. And, It took me a while before I actually started using Twitter like that. Um, so I actually saw them, it was in 2016, but I started out really, really in 2018. So it took me two years to actually make the leap to, to start it, to, to, to start tweeting. So it's not something that it was instant. I didn't see these guys making money on Twitter or selling stuff just by tweeting. And then I decided just, okay, let me do the same. It took a while because I, I had a back, a uh, nine to five job back then. In 2015, I believe it was, I got fired, got fired like a dog and I started freelancing <laughs> full time. And, I, and thankfully I made more money as a freelancer that, I, that I, as I did as a nine to five employee, but, um, we had a kid, my wife and I, and the money was not enough as for me to feel comfortable. I was not comfortable with the amount of money that I was making. So I decided to go back to the nine to five job. I believe it was in 2017, I believe, December 2017, I, I got a new job. But I got bored. I got bored. I got bored. And like a couple of months later, I was already making enough money with Twitter because I got into that thing and I quit the job. And I'm full time on Twitter and other social media accounts. So it, it was a long time in between I making the decision of tweeting and writing and promoting my ideas to actually doing it. <laughs> It's like, uh, there's a, like a two year span be, be, be behind that. And of course, there's a, a bunch of um, business failures in the past, um, business ventures with other friends that didn't pan out as we wanted, a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of pain and dreadful nights and anxiety and waking up nervous and trembling and with heart reputations and just believing I was going to die, a lot of that shit. But thankfully, People found value on my tweets, on my ideas. And I realized, why not make money from that? Like, I already have 10 years experience as a graphic designer and web designer. Why not teach them how to do that? And that became a, that became a course. And that course made me, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars. One freaking course about web design. That is not even like groundbreaking. Yeah. I know what people in my audience want to hear. And thankfully, what they want to hear is what I love and what I would love and, and what I would actually practice in my life. <laughs> It's funny when things come together like that. So I could actually do that, but I don't want to. I like wasting my time <laughs> on Twitter and, <laughs> and just bullshitting and talking with people and meeting new guys. Like, for example, look at you and me. We're here right yeah. now because of Twitter. Because I was just bullshitting on Twitter. You, I believe you followed me. I saw you. I'm like, okay, this guy's talking about things that I like, followed. And now we're connecting right here because we spent nine hours a day on Twitter, maybe. That's all it is. Yeah. And it's, um, this is the only social platform that I've been able to do this on because I'm in Facebook. I haven't had this kind of connection with people in Facebook groups or, you know, Telegram it's communities anymore. or it's not possible YouTube anymore. even other YouTube creators. Like I've met two of them, you know, Twitter Thanks creators. Twitter, right? I've met two dozen. Thanks to Twitter. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, it's it's insane. I think there, 
it's insane how how um, how flat the world is, but only specifically on Twitter. Uh, absolutely, reason. absolutely. The smart people are on Twitter, so, and the interesting people are on Twitter. So why not be there at least reading some of their ideas, which are usually very good, very good ideas. Let me ask you some questions for the audience because this is something that I okay. This is something that I struggled with for a long time. Let me let me get your thoughts on this. So I was tweeting for basically since Twitter was invented, like 2009. Same. Okay, from 2009 until two months ago, I was tweeting, and I felt like I got no traction at all. And then all of a sudden, like I just decided to start tweeting things people wanted, or so I don't even know what changed. Um, what have you found in terms of how do you how do you um, how do you tweet things people want to read? That's the question. Well, <laughs> I believe that now it's easier than ever, especially if you are mm-hmm. like in the self discipline and money niche to grow a, a brand on Twitter because there's a bunch of people that have been paving the way for basically new generation of people that want to talk about that, making it much easier for others who also like that topic of money, about self-discipline, about self-improvement, to actually talk about that and receive good feedback really quickly. Two or three years ago, it was not like it is right now because there was no what we call money Twitter. We just had the famous guys like James Clear, which he was he's famous because of a blog that he created, which is a very good blog. You should read it if you haven't. You had all of the other famous guys with check marks, blue check marks on Twitter that created a brand through other mediums, through YouTube, through um, blogs, through other social medias. And they just used Twitter to communicate their news and some stuff or sign up to my newsletter. So it was really hard to get people's attention without being famous from other platforms. If you wanted to talk about money and, and, and self-discipline and stuff like that. But then a couple of guys like Lattimore, like Cortez, like um, Chris Johnson. I don't know if you follow him on Twitter. Um, yeah, we follow each other. That. I've been trying to meet up, but I, I had to leave the country. Yeah, we, well, we were we both in talking Vegas. about that and <laughs> they paved the way. Yeah. They paved the way. I, you know, got in, into that train and I'm here. I'm here. So in regards to the audience, in regards to the audience, in regards to tweeting about what people want, you need to understand that everyone has basic needs. We all want to feel loved. We want, we want attention. We need food. We want to feel comfortable. We want to feel safe. We want to um, build more solid relationships. And we want money. And all of the implications of making money, safety and freedom, of course. So by knowing these natural needs that we all have, build content around that and relate it in such a way that to those topics that people might say, oh, that's interesting. I had never seen it like that. Look at yourself. Um, I think it's through Twitter that, that all this is opening. Because what I found is on YouTube, it's hard to expand and take risks with your personality because, you know, I'm only doing three videos a week. But on Twitter, I can say nonsense. I can say like crazy <laughs> shit. And I it's either going to get a hit or it's for $900, not. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's good. So but you I, see, that's, you that's your life and your interests. Um, who made you who you are, and you're just like using that on Twitter without even revealing it. I have actually found very few things that I like and that I'm actually obsessed with that people don't resonate with. Tell me about that. That's the that's the strangest thing. Like I, t- I can talk about the music, it's fine. I talk about stand-up comedy stuff, it hits. I talk about like LinkedIn, that hits. <laughs> YouTube content, making mu- like any sort of like political opinions. Like my, how do I feel well, about the vaccines? How do I feel about Afghanistan? You know, it's nonsense. I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised yeah, yeah. because look at you, man. Comedian, musician, cold email <laughs> expert, um, agency owner. What else? Doing YouTube stuff. Um, what else? You, you used to do the cold approaches through, through the phone call, which is, oh man, I hate that shit. So you've lived a life that it would take a lot of average people to live, um, I don't know, 300 years. And you've been able to capitalize on all of that. You've become an interesting person and now you're banking on it. So if anyone wants to grow a social media account or become, I don't know, a little bit more prolific at life, get into uncomfortable situations. That will give you a bunch of stories and a bunch of 
skills that you wouldn't be able to gain otherwise. What do you say? Okay, because I've had this pushback too. When they see my Twitter, when people see my tweets, um, I'm sure you've you've had this too. What do you say to people that say they don't know what to tweet or they have nothing to tweet about? They are they oh, have their heads I, stuck I can't inside their asses. That's <laughs> <He's>, the thing. <laughs> they're just too. Their ego is in the way. They want to create the perfect yeah. tweet without even creating yeah, exactly. Me too. the first tweet. That's the thing. And I remember when I first started, it was an interesting experience because I wanted it to be perfect, especially since um, English is my second language. And um, when you try to grow a social media account in a second language, it's hard to say the least because you know your limitations. Like you really know how limited you are in that language. So I overcomplicated things. Here's how I created my tweet at first. I wrote them in Spanish and used Google Translate. <laughs> so um, if the tweet didn't came out correctly, it was because the translation was done badly by Google Translate. <laughs> so what I did was basically I delegated the, the awfulness to Google Translate. So if anything came out wrongly, I just blame Google Translate for, for, for the mess that it caused. Um, of course, this was my way to rationalize the bad quality of my first couple of tweets and just to post mm -hmm. it. But eventually I, I said to myself, okay, if I want to actually learn how to write English in such a way that it makes me a much more compelling writer in that language, I need to stop translating shit with Google Translate. So after a while, I just decided to write everything in English. No matter how badly I thought it was written, I just posted it. I just posted it. I just made sure that it 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 was a little bit harder to interpret the tweet in, in many ways. Like, you know, Twitter is famous for misinterpreting what you tweet about. So I just tried to make sure that it, it couldn't be taken out of context in such a way that it would, it would like screw me up. Um, that's the only precautions that I still take today. Yeah. Um, that said... You need to get your 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 head out of your out of your ass. Like if you're trying to tweet, if you're struggling to tweet something, it's because you're just you want to tweet the most groundbreaking out, uh, idea in the world. And Twitter is not for tweeting groundbreaking ideas. Twitter rewards immediacy. Twitter rewards um, you taking your phone whenever you think about something and tweeting it. And the first iteration of that idea, it will be shit. But if it gets traction, oh, that's the perfect opportunity to iterate around that idea and make it better. Twitter is the best market research tool in the world. If you see something taking traction and getting likes and retweets and all of that shit, double down on that content because you struck gold. That's what most people don't realize. They want to tweet the best thing, not realizing that Twitter is not for the best, more polished ideas is to iterate upon those ideas that get traction to make them better. It's evolving and it, it's such a powerful tool for that because we found, so I found Twitter, I found money Twitter through uh, Daniel. I didn't even know his name was Daniel, through Black Hat Wizard. Yeah, Black Hat Wizard. Uh, because he was, because he had, you know, taken all my content and made his own course out of it. it you know, or whatever, who knows, who knows what he did. <laughs> but that was how I found Twitter. Um, and he tur it turned out he was a nice guy. He is a nice guy. <laughs> so, He's amazing, dude. So I've learned so much, but through that, uh, that was, that was my original approach. What I've learned through tweeting though is money Twitter goes so much deeper than just sharing tactics because YouTube seems like, it seems like my corner of YouTube, uh, tutorial YouTube is all tactics. It's like, here are the top three ways to close a, you know, on a cold call. Here are the top three improvements for your proposal. But then you'll look at Blackhead Wizard or SaaSwiz or Oliver or you or anyone. And it's like, yeah, they're saying that stuff. But then they're also talking about the vaccine and they're talking about the war and they're talking about like right wing politics. What do they think about having a wife? You know, are they on drugs? Oh, are they not yeah, on drugs? It's, it's, like, it's all these fun. levels to it. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. It makes it more fun because you actually see the personality <laughs> of the person, which you cannot see it on, on YouTube. Well, you can if you're vlogging, but still the vlog is, it's like a polished version of your life. But Twitter, it's much more emotional and much more, it's closer to real life than what we want to accept. That's, that's, that's the reality of Twitter. And that's why I love it. 
I, any anyone that goes to Twitter and finds a real community, not 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 that's not politics, will tell you the same thing. Twitter changed my life, not because of the platform, but because of the people they follow and the people that follow them back on the platform. The and the real life um, connection that you build with your audience and with the people that you follow. Like look at us right now. We are building. Even though it's in a digital medium, we're building report at this very moment. And I can see more about, uh, I can see more of your personality than just watching a quick video of yourself on YouTube or whatever. So it's, it's a great platform to not only iterate upon your ideas to make them better, but also to reach out to other people that are in your niche, other people that are richer than you, other people that are smarter than you. And you're just one tweet away from connecting with them like i remember danny miranda i don't know if you follow him on twitter danny he's trying to grow uh, his podcast and his mission is like 10 years from now that's his like long-term goal is to have a podcast so famous that he can go to madison square garden and fill it up just to have a live podcast with someone famous which to me it's like okay Saying that out loud takes guts. <laughs> and he's like constantly talking about it. And this guy, because of the Money Twitter community, he tweeted something at um, to Gary Vaynerchuk, I believe. And people started saying, hey, Gary, Gary, um, visit Danny's podcast. He's a cool guy. And for some reason, Gary said yes. And Danny now has Gary as one of his guests on, on his podcast. And that's social proof. If he wants to invite someone else, someone other fa from some other famous person, he can just say, I've interviewed these, this guy, that guy, that guy, and Gary Vaynerchuk. And it was because of Twitter. One tweet away, and the community helped him. By the, all of us. Like, I was one of those guys who also, like, yes, yes, go to Gary's, um, go to Danny's podcast. And Gary said yes, just like that, because of the community on Twitter. One tweet away from changing your life. One tweet away. That's People are sleeping on Twitter, bro. I didn't know any of this existed. Two months ago, I didn't know any of this. I just saw Black Hat Wizard, and I was like, this guy's really fucking me, dude. <laughs> that was literally all I was thinking. And then it turns, out there was, it turns out there was a giant community where everyone's friendly and nice to each other. <laughs> and that was just my approach from the outside. Um, okay, what do you think makes money Twitter... So right wing and so conservative. That's that's an interesting that was question. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm not even I think right so. wing. I think the, oh, like right. yeah. I enjoy the right wing content yeah. because it's it's like funny now because the other side is not funny anymore. <laughs> I just like read the, that, those kind of tweets because they're, they, they are like the dissenting voice and it's fun to read it even though I don't agree with, with most of the shit they tweet about. But it's fun to read things that are not, at least for me, are not within my own like ideas. Anyhow, talking about the, the, the um, binary politics like left wing and, and right wing, in regards to money and self-discipline and stuff like that, it's, it's, you're just lying if you, if you say that this belongs to this party or whatever. Because from, the, from both sides, you'll find a bunch of lazy people, a bunch of people that don't up to, don't own up to their, to their, to the expectations that they set for themselves. They just like fuck up in their lives. So I have no idea why, man. I have maybe that's what it is. It's just the it's just the open mindedness because is it is it even right wing? Meaning I don't is it right wing or is it just right wing? Open? I just believe because like independent people. I don't know. That's my sensation. Right. You can find everything from like people dating models, high testosterone people to like I don't know, people that are into LGBT to like hardcore Christians are in the group to like mar people who love marriage, people who are hardcore singlers. Yeah, man. Like I'm it's like, all there. I, I think it's just all like, of the spectrum. I have some, some, I follow people that have like the pronouns in their bios, which to me is interesting to see. And in the right wing side, they hate that shit. I follow them because I don't give a crap. It's fun to see how they like attack each other on Twitter. It's, it, for me, it's, it's, I enjoy the, the, the chaos of watching that. 
not when I'm involved. I, I like to be like the expect the the one who watches. <laughs> I, I don't like it does political like... messes, but um, it's fun to see it. It's fun to see it, and it's fun to see it's how a... we have so many people from different ideologies converge together in a tiny community that sometimes are at odds with each other, but not as much as on political on the political side of Twitter. I go at odds on purpose sometimes. Like if someone tweets about their wife, I'll tweet about how I'm happy being divorced. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I think I just create my ideas based on what are everyone else's ideas and then what's the opposite of what they're saying. <laughs> we all do that. We all do that in some way or another. <laughs> you know, um, we're basically an amalgamation of all the shit that we've seen with Red and with experience in our lives. And no idea that you have or... 99.9% .9 of the ideas that you have are original. They're just based on other people's thoughts, ideas, the words that you read in the past. And you attach your own biases to that and you attach that, um, your own values to all of that and you create who you are. But basically we're just, where all of these thoughts and shit that we've read in the past converge. That's who we are in the present. So, so that gets me back to the to the what to tweet about and um the I don't know what to tweet about. Dude, everything has been said. Every freaking shit in this world has been said, but nobody has said it like you. That's where the real magic happens. When you talk about your ideas and you merge them with your stories and with your with your experience, you create original content. Not in the way that the facts are original because you just took them from someone else. But your experience is original. Your story is the original part of what you're talking about. So this works for any social media account that you're, that you're trying to grow. You grab the facts, the how-to, the tactics, the strategies, and you talk about how you have implemented all of that and the experiences you and what you have experienced thanks to implementing all of that shit and the results that you've been able to achieve. And that is where your originality is born. From taking all of that shit and, uh, and just talking about your own experience. That's where originality comes in. What do you think is the reason why people don't do this? Because it's easy. You know it's easy. You're sitting here in the Dominican Ego. Republic. You're working Ego. 30 minutes a day. You know, you know, like, I know it's easy. <laughs> you don't want to be judged. Let me tell you my own experience. As I told you, I, I'm very, very self-aware of my proclivities, I believe is the word, of striving for maximum video and audio quality. That's why I have this expensive camera and this shit behind me. And, and, and I know, I know I shouldn't be wasting so much money and time making this setup. So I've been using that as an excuse to not post more videos on YouTube and specifically on Instagram. But recently, as recently as Two or three days ago, I don't know. I, I don't know if I had a dream or whatever the fuck happened, but something in my brain clicked. Even though I've been I've been here three years doing this shit every fucking day, and I just decided like one take and it's posted. Fuck it. And you tweeted something yesterday, I believe it was, it was you. I think you tweeted something about no, no one Kagan, I believe that you bought for one of his courses, no, and he was like shirtless. Like in, in a VSL yeah. video and, and like he just recorded it and posted shirtless selling a course for a thousand dollars. And that caught my attention because two or three days ago, I just decided one take post it. And of course I have to like edit a little bit to, to, to reduce the, 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 the time of the video. And I free and I feel free. I feel free. Like yesterday, I just grabbed this little, little DJI camera that I have here, put it right there. I recorded like 20 videos. I I split it up, and now I, I now I have all of those videos that I took in one take. One take. I don't give a shit about if it has the best words, which I don't have. I certainly don't have the best words in English, at least speaking it. So I just did what I can do with the skills that I currently have and with the knowledge that I currently have. And I decided to just fuck it, post it. Risk embarrassment. You've, you've already been mobbed. This is me talking to myself. You've already been mobbed on Twitter. So you know how it feels to be attacked. And frankly, I don't give a shit. 
<laughs> so let me translate that from writing to video because there's more risk when it's video because it's you, it's your face, you're talking. When you, it's writing, people don't see your demeanor, okay? So I decided just to screw it. Let's post it. Risk embarrassment. This is what, okay. This is what doesn't click for a lot of people and I don't know why. We have been doing this podcast, right? We've been, to, or whatever you call this. We've been talking for like 40 minutes. We haven't repeated a single word. We haven't had to stop and like re-record and make sure it was perfect. And yet this video is great. Good postable content. I hope. <laughs> so like, why is, no, I mean, I know it's good. How many videos have I made, dude? I know this is great. So why though? Do we feel like when we go and make this four minute YouTube video, why do we feel like we got to get every single word perfect? When on the podcast interview, we're not getting every word perfect. When we're doing a speech in front of a group of hundreds of people, we're not getting every word perfect. When we're in a, a business meeting, a sales call, we're not, there's none of that same pressure. So why would we feel that same pressure when we're creating YouTube videos? That's a very good question. And it's a question that I still don't have an answer for. Because I'm new at creating videos for, for YouTube. But the first video, I actually decided to make it 100% for YouTube. It took me like 10 hours to create. From scripting it, to recording it, to editing it, to adding all of the B-roll and the audio and the swooshes and the explosions and the zoom and the zoom out. All of that shit. Like 10 hours. The second video took me like 6 hours. <laughs> the third video, like 5 hours and the... Well, the last video I just created will be, it, it will be posted like next Wednesday. Um, it took me three hours because of that decision that I made of fuck it, just post it. And I believe, at least from my experience, from my, my point of view is that we are comparing ourselves with, uh, MK, MK BHD. That's his, that's his name. Marquez Brownlee, mm -hmm. I believe we're comparing ourselves with Marquez these Brownlee. big YouTube accounts that have a million followers and have been like YouTubing for 10 years and they have 8K video. They have a shotgun microphone that the best Sennheiser, I believe, is of the brand. And they have like a team of editors, a team of people writing the script. And we want to do that. And we're comparing ourselves with people that have 10 years in front of us. That's my sensation. YouTube, it's already sophisticated. It's not a new market. It's too sophisticated to try to catch up to these YouTubers that have been doing this for 10 years. So we strive to make the, the quality of the video like these guys. Like take, for example, um, Mr. Beast. Even though his videos are recorded amateurishly, meaning he's just with a camera or whatever, there's nothing mature, uh, uh, amateur of, of, of from those videos. They have a million dollar team recording that shit editing in such a way that it looks it looks like it was recorded by me <laughs> or by you but that's a, that's the intention and they know it and they edit in such a way that dude it's a team of people i cannot compete with that so anyone that's struggling to create video for youtube and trying to um achieve that kind of quality just remember that these guys have been doing this for 10 years man just hit record and post it the other thing that, that I guess shook me out of that was our most popular videos. So like, what do, what do we have? We have the one that inspired literally everything, probably the video that made me seven figures, which is, you know, how we book clients for X27. That took me about 12 minutes to film. You know, I sent one cold email and then just documented it, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, right. Our other, some of our other top videos were like me doing a G Suite review from my hotel room in Romania. You know, like 100,000 views or like us doing a review of HubSpot. So like I, that's what messes me up because, because sometimes we'll do like a breakdown of Dead Mouse and then he'll retweet it and it'll get, you know, a bunch of views and that will take, you know, a couple hours. And sometimes we'll just make like an 18 minute video about G Suite and it'll get 100,000 views. So it's like Twitter, dude, like it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It like most matter. of it just and, going You know, I've been thinking hard about this. And I told my wife, I believe like two or three weeks ago, and I even tweeted about this. If someone wants to learn something, they will watch an Indian guy that recorded some shit 10 years ago in 420p with a thick Indian accent. They'll watch the fucking video if they want to learn it. 
So take this, take this as advice. If someone is willing to watch a video from a guy that recorded it 10 years ago in like the worst quality ever with the worst um, um, audio quality ever, and people are willing to watch that because they want to learn it, what makes you think they'll stop watching your videos because they don't have the best lighting or the best um, audio quality? And I know I'm, I didn't used to take that advice, but I'm taking it right now. Like just from the videos that I'll be, rec I, I just recorded for my Instagram account. I just like, I, okay, I have this light. I turn it on and I just hit play, hit record. I won't. I want you to see the new content that I'm coming up with on this you should channel. Send it to me, I hope man. I hope it's, I, I hope I, the I audience has seen it too. Because you hired like some guys to follow you around, right? Dude, what do we do? So I'm in India. We have it, we have Div and Vishal are now on camera talent. Uh -huh. So like my assistant Div is talking, he's giving his opinion on stuff. Vishal, I I grew his Twitter account. So now we're doing a video on like Twitter DMs and he's getting DMs now. So now he's able to give his feedback like we're really we're changing the vibe hard, <laughs> but it really is that it's like hitting record, having one or two lines of notes, and then now we're able to make videos that are super valuable. You'll see it, but it really is, should take it up to the next level. Completely. I want to what I actually realized. It. And it didn't take, it didn't take a lot a, of effort, right? In regards to like scripting it and whatever, you're just being yourself. No. And the content's going to be better. You'll see it. I hope so. But it, I it's because I realized it's not about content. It's actually about, it's just about vibe. And the re and that's the reason why. That's my, that's, it's, that's the word I think we're looking for. People want to be entertained. Sort of. It's, yeah, it's entertainment, but it's also like, Teaching so I, I don't, I don't know. Some people watch, watch these videos. I think it's just vibe, meaning like people are listening to this. Maybe they're not even getting on Twitter, but they're listening to this because they don't have any other entrepreneurs in their life and they just kind of want to hear what's happening Ooh, that's you know then they thing, hear man. this and then they go do their own thing that is a big thing i i think that's probably 90 percent of it honestly that's a big <laughs> thing you know if you don't have real life mentors or you live in a shithole country um you should strike that off because they'll call me a racist <laughs> even though i live in one um and you don't have people dr that... i was down in haiti a long time ago yeah um it's bad dude. dr is the nice part of haiti though um, nice part of the island. <laughs> Dominican Republic is nice. It's nice. Um, I, I've been, I've been in Haiti. I used to travel two or three times a year, um, to Haiti to take photos of, of where I used to work at. And the people are amazing in, in, in Haiti, even though there's like animosity between Dominican Republic and, and Haiti. I felt loved when I was there for a couple of times. And every time I like rem remember my times at Haiti, it's all I have is like good memories of, of working alongside them. Anyhow, uh, if you don't have anyone all in your life my, uh, or in your family my, my or, is a little different or near you that can mentor yeah. you, like screw it. Follow them on Twitter or social media and, and let them mentor you through their content. Like that's a big realization that a lot of guys don't understand. They want to, oh, I received many, many DMs telling me like, hey, mentor me. And I'm like, no, <laughs> go away. My mentorship is the one that you either pay for it or you read for me. That's, that's it. And if you can't afford it, read it. There's a bunch of free content out there. And if you can't afford paying someone a high level coach to coach you, you can always ask them a couple of questions on the timeline and they'll reply to you. Amazingly, they'll fucking reply to your, to your, to, to your comments, which is something that a lot of people don't understand. Reach out to and these I think people that you a, admire and ask the questions in the timeline, not in the direct message, in the timeline. Right, because then they're more likely to retweet it. Yeah. That's that's how I feel too. Yeah. The um I think there's there's more to be gained. So for instance, I talked to James Altucher on this channel. I, oh, you know James Altucher? James Altucher was oh, this yeah, author James. that I really loved like five, six years ago. I loved his blog post. Great guy. Amazing guy. But since I've been following him that long, by the time I got him on the channel, I was like fanboying so hard that I barely got anything from the interview. <laughs> so sometimes you don't even, sometimes you don't even need to meet them. I got more value from all of the James Aldrich content than I did out of talking to them. And yet we think we need to meet these people in order to get real value. from them. You don't read their books. James Aldrich has amazing books, man. Like the choose yourself and the, there's another one for employees on, on how to become like the best employee in the world. They're very good books. You, you read that. And you learn from them. It's like mentorship, man. 
but people want to be. Yeah. And then sometimes you don't want to you don't want to meet them because when you meet them, you find out they hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Serious, every time I meet my <laughs> idols, sometimes I think, I think like one out of ten, one out of ten like you. <laughs> it, when, when I meet people that I've been like following for a long time and I admire them, it humbles me. It humbles me for two reasons. One, because, oh, wow, I met this person. And secondly, because I see that they're just real people like me. And um, after I started meeting my, let's say my heroes, I realized that there's no need to for me to put someone in a pedestal anymore. Like, um, they all have their own pains. They all have their de- demons that they have, that they battle every day. Like yourself. Like me. Like anyone who's listening. So, um, I, I do enjoy meeting them. I do it because of that. It makes me feel, it humbles me for those two reasons. And it makes me realize that nobody has a definitive answer of why we are here in this world. Nobody has it figured out completely. And that's a good thing because sometimes we see a, a bunch of these guys who have already made it and we think they have the answers for everything. They have the answers for why we're here in the earth, the answer on how to become rich, the answers on how to fuck bitches and make money. And when you talk with them, you realize that they are also trying to figure it out. There's no bigger realization in this world that realizing that these successful people are very similar to yourself. Are very, they have more in common with you than what you believe. So I like that of meeting my heroes and, and meeting the people that I've admired for, for years. You realize there's no making it either. Like I've, I've met some so really grinding successful every people fucking and day like until talking you to them, I'm like, make it. yeah. All, all they're doing now is the same shit I'm doing, but now they're now they have to make twenty million dollars a month, or else their life falls apart. You know, it's <laughs> like the exact same thing, just with a lot more pressure, a, a little bit more risk. Yeah, people struggling to make yeah. ten thousand dollars, and they're struggling to make a hundred million dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, bro. Or they go the other way, and then they don't think about business at all. Like a. a one of my early mentors in Hollywood was um, Polly Shore. I, me and Jacob did uh, an animation project. We worked with Polly Shore for like three months at the comedy store. And I learned so much just being around him. like Because he is so anti-money, he doesn't think about it. Because he's got the comedy store. He has a movie has career. Like, he doesn't even talk. Yeah, he doesn't even talk about it or, or anything. He'll talk about like mostly girls. You know, <laughs> That's all he was talking about was hitting on women the whole time. <laughs> It's fun. You see, you you have cool stories, man. Like you met Polly Shore. It was because you were like in, into comedy. And being a comedian, that's like when you bomb, you really bomb. Like it, it's I, I can't even imagine being in front of, the, of of a of an audience and bombing as a comedian. That that has to be very uncomfortable, right? Yeah. So comedy, and one reason why I broke away from it is it's. It's a, um, it's very mechanical is what it became. So you bomb when you're, when you're riffing it. And sometimes you still bomb with jokes you write. But what I would do is basically write, you know, five, six minutes of material every single night when I was actually on the grind. Then I would go and test it out. And then from there, just kind of retweak it. So bombing doesn't actually end up hurting. It's, it's kind of just like a missed marketing campaign. It's just like, oh, shit, that joke it's, didn't it's like Twitter. Try messing around with the words. Yeah. But my problem with comedy was it was too, it was too rote like that, meaning like you, you really have to mechanic, mechanic. work on a set and say the same thing over and over and over and over again, the exact same way to get the wording perfect. Uh-huh. And I, I don't like that. I would rather just riff, you know, like go sit on stage, riff. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's dramatic, sometimes it's valuable. And I, I, I like that way better than I believe that one of the things that people don't understand from stand-up comedians, there's nothing about, there's nothing about stand-up that is actually just standing up and making people laugh. There's a process, man. These people know those words so well. They memorize that shit so well that they it feels like they're just coming up with that shit. But <laughs> it's not. Dude, and I, can, I can't even give a business speech two times in a row. You know, like I have to read. I'm not given the same slides twice. So I can't do stand-up comedy. <laughs> Well, now we know why uh, you you don't yeah. like the now we know the, why the re- repeating the same shit over and over and over again. It's true. Okay, Jose. Um, 
What what should we leave people with? Where where are people going to to get more info on you? They can go to Twitter at Jose Rosado, and they can go to Instagram at Jose Rosado HQ because I don't have the at Jose Rosado on Instagram. If someone can help me get at Jose Rosado at Instagram, oh man, that will be fantastic. I've tried for the last like three years, no success. And of course, I'm at website, rosa.do, R-O-S-A dot D-O, Dominican Republic. And, and yeah, they can, I'm and we're on, on YouTube, Twitter. so go, go subscribe to Jose, check, check him out on Twitter and then go subscribe to him on YouTube because yeah, you're cranking I'm, out content. Look at that beautiful blue background. I am literally in an Airbnb outside of the Taj Mahal right now, nice. <laughs> waiting to go film there tomorrow. Nice. I, I want to see those videos, man. I'm eager to, to watch them. I hope I hope they come out good. I know they'll come. They'll yeah, they'll be fine. The um, okay, Jose. So, guys, go follow him on Twitter, Jose Rosado. Go follow him on YouTube. We'll link down below to everything. And yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for for inviting me, Alex. Have a great day. Well, a great night in your case. You too. If you want to grow on Twitter, check out our Twitter growth course, Twitter 10K. You can grab that down below at twitter10k.com. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Alex Berman. Please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.